Merit Styles is the MVP candidate for MPP for the Toronto riding of their report, where uh, there are many Portuguese. Uh, first of all, Merit Styles, what can these citizens expect from the NDP? Well, you know, it's been a real pleasure to represent uh, the community of Davenport for the last four years. I was elected in 2018, and before that I was the school board trustee for the area, and it really has been a privilege uh, representing, again, Canada's largest concentration of Portuguese-speaking uh, constituents. So I, I feel like it's been a real pleasure and a privilege. And I think that what people can expect from the NDP is that we're going to be, uh, a let, unlike previous governments of the Liberals and the Conservatives, where we've seen the cost of everything go way, way up uh, and making it more and more difficult to get the regular services that we need in our communities, like health care, uh, Uh, like better education, um, you're going to see the NDP with policies that really try to address those issues, uh, as well as actually bringing pay up so that people can afford the daily necessities of life. What are Merit Styles proposals <clears throat> for uh, Davenport, especially for the area of education that has been impacted by COVID-19? Mm -hmm. Well, first of all, you know, it's been something I've been fighting for for the last eight years now in our community is to stop the closure of our local community schools. Uh, we lost a lot of schools under conservative and liberal governments, and we cannot afford to lose any more of those community schools. They're absolutely essential uh, to our growing communities. You know, if you go everywhere in Davenport, uh, there are lots of baby strollers, lots of young families, uh, and, and we want to be able to make sure that they can keep their kids in our local community schools. So that's a really big priority for me, and it has been for a long time. And as well as that, we want to try to make their school classroom sizes smaller. Um, and that's going to mean uh, a real investment, you know, making sure that we hire more teachers, more educational assistants, that we put some of those healthcare care and, and social services right into our schools, like mental health services, guidance counselors, extra educational assistants. It's going to be more and more important, especially after uh, the pandemic, that our kids have those supports. I don't I know that we have right now uh, many, many children who are struggling with anxiety. Uh, many of the people who work in our schools, too, have had a really hard time. So we need to make sure that they're getting all the support they need under the current government. The conservatives cut Uh, education at a time when we should have been investing in it and liberals closed schools. We need to keep them open and we need to keep class sizes smaller. Uh, you, rec you recently said that people in the Davenport community have been pushing for uh, electrification for years due to the air pollution caused by diesel engines. What are the goals to change the environmental paradigm? Very good question. You know, uh, yes, in our community, which is really, we see a lot of railroads uh, through our community. It's kind of defined by uh, trains, actually. And, and of course, we've all grown up and we all live every day with these trains in our community. And that's great. We love trains. But unfortunately, we do need to make sure that as we increase the number of trains and there will be more and more trains coming through our riding because Metrolinx is building some big bridges that that are going to make it easier to put more trains through from Barry. Uh, we need to also make sure that that line is electrified. People in the community have been worrying about this and fighting for electrification for, gosh, 10, 15 years now. Um, and under Mr. Del Duca, when he was the Minister of Transportation under the Liberal government, he stopped the electrification plan. He paused it. Um, and unfortunately, now we see the Conservatives also pushing back the date. So that means that our community will experience years of more and more dirty diesel trains coming through. Uh, so I think that's going to be a big concern to a lot of people in the community, especially seniors, other people who might have health concerns, and of course our children. So my uh, commitment is to, is to push for electrification faster um, and to make sure that Metrolinx continues to, uh, uh, to build new infrastructure with electrification in mind. My last question uh, about the election, uh, what will do differently in Davenport if you are elected? 
Well, you know, I, I've been, um, for the last four years, as the member of provincial parliament, uh, my team and I have been able to, uh, I think, provide a lot of support, connect a lot of people with services uh, when they desperately needed it during the pandemic, including a lot of our small businesses. And one thing that really concerns me is I see some changes in our community where suddenly we don't have, you know, as many of the Portuguese small businesses as we once did. So I think it's going to be really important that we continue to invest and support all of those, uh, the Portuguese community in particular and their businesses and their culture and their community. It's what makes our area of Toronto so special. And so the more that we can support that, the culture, the food, uh, the tradition, the history, of uh, Portuguese community here, the better. I know I've been working on my my Portuguese, now fellow band Portuguese, um, and, but I think it's really important. Yeah, I think it's really important that, um, you know, we continue to work on our Portuguese, that I, as the member who represents the community, understand the community and the culture and the history. And, um, and, and I want to say as well, one of the things I worked on over the last few years was really pushing to make sure that services are available in Portuguese. So vaccination, clinics, et cetera, yes, in Portuguese, but also, you know, protecting important services like the Portuguese Mental Health Clinic uh, at, at uh, Western Hospital. Uh, I fought really hard with the community to maintain those services in Portuguese. Uh, it's critical that people in our community can speak their first language when they're in a crisis. It's absolutely essential. And I will be definitely uh, ensuring that I put that at the forefront, as well as making sure that our seniors get the services they need in their homes so they can age at home in a comfortable way.